Hey folks! So it's been a minute since I've done one of these videos and um, that's alright. I'm jumping back into asking your or answering shit <laughs> right off the bat and I was gonna start talking about how like now I can talk better <laughs> compared to last year um, when I was recovering from and I still am from coming off of benzodiazepines which is why I trip up over words and all kinds of stuff but anyhow it's been a while since I've done these videos and last time I used to do them like way too long like I was super into it and that's not a bad thing but like you know two hours worth of talking um isn't good for me physically at all um or even like mentally my poor brain was like oh all the things so i'm gonna start doing these ask an herbalist videos again um and i'm gonna keep them short and simple now um something that i need you to know is that i am not a doctor my advice does not replace seeking medical advice um my advice isn't even advice this is just me and you having a conversation these are things that i would consider doing for myself so nothing you hear here today is like meant to diagnose you treat you fix you again i am not a doctor um and really i'm just having a conversation with you and i want you to get curious about the things that i'm talking about you can go research them on your own and then you can talk to your doctor about them so you're gonna see me using this notebook because i'm a human and um while i do have pretty decent memory and my memory is getting a lot better um after like you know i've been a couple years now of recovering from benzos um but i still write stuff down um and this is basically how it's gonna go i'm gonna read you a question that somebody asked me and then i'm gonna have a conversation with that person and you're gonna witness it <laughs> um so here we go so Cassie asks herbs to help with pain. Um, it seems like she's got a bit of um, fibroarthritis going on and like stress is like something that she can't get out of her life um, because again, we're human. Uh, and I wish that we could all just be like, my job is stressful. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> That's not reality for the vast majority of us. So the one thing that I, I do to like cope with a pretty stressful job I know people are like, oh, it must be so amazing. You're out here like you do these herbs and these plants and these land and everything for a living. That's so amazing. And it is. But also you don't see all the behind the scenes stuff where it's like taxes and constant customer service. No offense. Um, and like all these other things and being ready and deadlines. And just this is a lot on top of a person who um, has spent years on disability and just... Um, it's physically strained from chemical damage. Um, anyhow, so I deeply relate to like the stress of a job, but not being able to just not do it. Like we either do this or we don't eat, right? Um, so the first thing that I would ask you if you were sitting across this table with me, are you drinking nourishing herbal infusions? Um, because I would say that helping our body cope with stress and the pain that can come from these issues the first thing that I would be doing is making sure that I was deeply nourished I would be drinking nettle I would be drinking linden I would be drinking oat straw and I'd be making those separately don't worry there's videos of here of how to make these nourishing herbal infusions and it's, it's basically just one ounce of one singular herb like nettle for example in a quart jar and then you pour boiling water over the top put a cap on it be careful not to burn yourself don't shake the jar don't shake the jar water will spray everywhere um and then just let it sit overnight you know let it sit i usually do it in the morning let it sit all the way until the evening and then i stick it in the fridge to get cold and the next morning i strain it and i drink it and with nettle the longer you infuse it in that way and the colder it is the better it tastes um and then those are the same basically for linden and oat straw now nettle really will help with brain fog and deep nourishment. Um, she's also really amazing at helping our body cope with stress. When you're stressed out and you're pushing yourself, your adrenaline glands push themselves. That's what it is. It just keeps giving and giving and giving it. And so it's great for anxiety in that way too because it's going to nourish your adrenals as you are pushing them to go more. But it's not like coffee. It'll give you real energy just through nourishment. Um, and then Linden. She's a pretty powerful anti-inflammatory like there's been some studies shown that say that she's 
like one of the most powerful anti-inflammatories like to the point where like she knocks like um, ibuprofen and things like that and prescription anti-inflammatories out of the water but it takes consistent regular use um, and then oat straw not only is she an amazing bone builder she's pretty fantastic at nourishing our nervous system and again stress plus nervous system equals explosion you know and so i i think that um if i was living with these issues i would definitely begin drinking nourishing herbal infusions on a regular basis and i would rotate through them um and google is your friend here you can learn all about nourishing herbal infusions and definitely um learn which ones do what um and it's all pretty simple just long brewed tea the only thing i'll put out there because i'm getting sidetracked <laughs> is that um if you're going to make a nourishing herbal infusion, the rule of thumb is one plant per jar, and if it has a strong smell, like lavender, chamomile, rose, yarrow, think strong smell, like fragrant scent, do not make a nourishing herbal infusion with it because you will actually extract those really strong volatile oils that you're smelling, and then you'll be drinking straight essential oils, and that shit will kill you. So um, don't do that. But then as far as um, you talked about you take a lot of fish oil, and that helps you, and I'm glad that you found something. But I'd also, like, if I was you, I would be making sure that I was eating at least four or five servings of fatty fish a week. I'd be making sure that I was eating plenty of healthy animal fats. Um, um, I don't really find health in pills. I think that um, it can kind of like lead us down that path of like we associate health with pills versus we should associate our health with um, a varied, wide, varying, a varying diet, right? Like all different kinds of things. Um, and so you can still take those by all means. Again, I'm not a doctor, but I like to include um, fatty fish in my diet. Um, and that can be as simple as eating sardines three or four times a week. And now people are like, Ugh, sardines. If you get a high quality sardine and eat them like, you know, with like a, your crackers or just eat them as is or on some um, olive oil dipped in bread, things like that. They're, they're actually really good. Just don't get the ghetto ones. Get a higher quality brand um, and no need to get them in oil. I don't, I can't stomach the ones in oil. They have enough oil in them as is and when they're water packed, you'll see all of that. Um, fantastic oil in that water um and you can just you know have those for lunch they actually make a pretty good breakfast a lot of people were like breakfast fish is a pretty like ancestral breakfast food across most cultures um but so i think that that would probably like um like if fish oil in a pill form is helping you just imagine what eating um healthy amounts of um of oily fish could do for you um, and then as far as like something that I would grow in my garden um, to help with the pain and stress would be um, California poppy is fantastic for helping with skeletal pain so like bone pain arthritis things like that um, and she's really just good at mellowing us out but not sedating us so much that we couldn't like use her at work um, now if you're dealing with like muscle pain you could definitely um, make like an infused St. John's wort oil um, and you got to use the fresh blooms for that. You could even like begin infusing some peppermint in some oil and just start using these really nice body oils. Um, any of the mint families generally like mint is like, you know, peppermint, even mother warts of mint, although that oil doesn't smell very good because she's kind of bitter. Um, lemon balm, anything like that is pretty good. Even catnip. Um, it's pretty good at um, helping with muscle pain externally, but internally as well. Um, motherwort would be fantastic for dealing with that stress um, and helping with muscle pain used internally as a tincture. And make sure when you source your tinctures that whoever you're getting them from is not using anything stronger than 100 proof vodka and that they're using fresh plant matter. If not, you're up into the pharmaceutical realm of things where you're likely to have a reaction and you're not getting any of the water soluble properties of the plant and it's just kind of, it's not going to be as whole and balanced and, and as effective. Okay. <laughs> so, um, there's definitely some things you can research more there and get curious about. And, um, again, I'm not a doctor, so talk to your doctor about. Um, so, Vanessa asks, are there herbs I should not take together? She also notes that she's not on any um, pharmaceutical medication and that she's just curious because she likes to make a lot of formulas and stuff. That is a really, really broad question. Nothing wrong with it, but I'm just going to kind of pick from the air here because I, 
there are literally thousands and thousands of millions of herbs in existence and um, while there's definitely some resources out there that you could probably dig into and see like from a medical standpoint which would like counteract with another one and definitely if you're using a lot of heroic herbs um, which is something that's very pharmaceutical and like semi-poisonous or outright poisonous um, that's something that you need to look into but honestly I only focus on safe simple herbals for the most part and so I don't know a lot about those really dangerous herbs because um, I just I don't touch them but um, you can kind of think of it this way so if an herb has a specific reaction to in your body like let's like let's, let's compare three here um willow bark uh ast astragalus and red clover all three of those do completely different things in our body uh, one's for pain one's an antiviral um and then one is like hormone health right but they all have something similar in common which is blood thinning um, you know, willow bark, just like aspirin, thins your blood. Astragalus root thins your blood. Um, red clover thins your blood. And so I'd probably say, if I was looking at a whole group of herbs, and I'd say, hey, you know, herb A, B, and C, they all thin my blood. So I probably shouldn't take them all at the same time. You know, and so you can kind of apply that across the board to anything you're working at. Um, it would be kind of like taking, like, um, um, multiple blood thinners at the same time your doctor probably wouldn't advise that um, but also I'd like to talk about the fact that formulations are risky and that they really rob you of getting to know one safe safe <laughs> I like how I combine that word safe simple plant ally at a time so you could be like well I better make sure not to use red clover and astragalus root um, and white willow bark at the same time, you know. But you could also say, I wouldn't do that because I want to get to know red clover and the amazing benefits she can have for um, my female reproductive health. Um, I want to know, I get to know astragalus root and learn about how she can help me with Lyme disease and heart health and, and just as an all around amazing um, antiviral. And I'd like to get to know willow bark and see how she can, you know, basically act like aspirin in my body and, you know, physically, internally or externally and, and help me ease away pain and stuff like that. Um, then you're not hit with the situation of which one of these herbs helped me and which one of them hurt me so like um, you really come across that more if you're making like tincture formulas if you took a tincture that had like five different herbs in it and one of those herbs made you really ill or on the flip side this tincture really helped you answer me this how do you know which plant did it how do you know which plant caused like a severe reaction in your body? Or how do you know which plant helped you feel better? Um, and those two things really matter. So like if you are taking all these herbs and you're like, well, it doesn't matter if it made me feel better. I just take it. Well, I mean, it kind of does because let's say it was the red clover that really helped you. It'd be great if you could dive into a personal relationship with that plant ally and learn how she helped you and why she helped you and really start learning all about her and these other areas that she can help with um, versus being like, huh, I better take all five of these herbs every day. That can actually be taxing on your system too, you know, because you don't really know each one of those individual herbal allies close enough to know how they're going to affect your body on a long-term basis or even a short-term basis. Now, it's pretty clear if you have a bad reaction why that's dangerous because let's say your turn out turns out that you're allergic to willow willow bark no I'm getting I'm just throwing these herbs out there this can apply to anything it's gonna suck to have to go through all those herbs and have to like figure out what caused the reaction by taking it to make the reaction occur again if you take a willow tincture and you have a bad reaction to willow tincture you know that you don't take willow tincture anymore if you take a tincture with all of these things in it you don't know which one of those are your friends and which one of them hurt you. Um, so I really, really encourage people just to work with simple formulas, especially if we're using something internally. Um, you know, and externally it's not as big of a deal. Not to say that we can't have um, an allergic reaction to something that we're using externally, but generally external allergic reactions or bad reactions aren't as severe as internal ones, right? Like if you put a salve on your arm and it's got five or six different herbs in it, um, 
and you have a reaction, if you stop putting that salve on your arm and you wash it off, odds are good in the next few days it'll be completely resolved, whatever occurred. If you take something internally and you have a bad reaction, it could, you know, it could really hurt you. It could really, it's not just like, you know, stop taking it by all means. And if you're working with safe, simple plant medicine, it's you're pretty hard pressed to hurt yourself. But let's say you take a lemon balm tincture and you're like, oh, that just made me feel really queasy and nauseous, which is like the opposite of what lemon balm tincture does. It like calms your stomach down. But you know, individual people can have individual reactions and you're like, okay, I can just stop taking this lemon balm tincture and that will go away. And if I don't take lemon balm again, I won't um, encounter that problem. But, and I know I'm a broken rep record here looping around, but you can't really do that if you've got a complex formula. And often when people are making complex formula, they're using complex heroic type herbs. So like, it might just not make you feel nauseous, like your kidney might shut down. Well, both kidneys, you know, you don't have just one kidney. Some people do. My dad does. <laughs> but, um, or your liver might, like, really get taxed by something you took. And then even if you ended up having to go to the hospital, I know this is like, holy shit, I just asked about herbs being blended together. <laughs> but what if you had to go to the hospital because you had a bad reaction to a tincture? And they said, what was in the tincture? And you could rattle off five different things, but they might not be able to, like, First of all, let's just be clear here. Most medical doctors know zero about herbs. Uh, in the United States, anyhow, there's no herbal training whatsoever required to become a medical doctor. So they're already going to be baffled by these herbs that you're bringing in. But now you bring them a laundry list of stuff that could have caused a reaction. Versus being like, this is the tincture I took. This is what happened. Help me. You know? Um, so just... Just consider working with one plant ally at a time um, and getting to know them um, on a personal level and seeing how they make your body respond, whether it's good or bad, just on one plant at a time. And if you are going to combine herbs, I would make sure that they don't have any similar extreme reactions like blood thinning. Um, so that is what I have to say about that. Okay, last question. I feel like I'm talking kind of fast. I might be, because I'm like, I don't want this to take two hours. <laughs> but as I do these and people submit more questions and as I get going, I'll, I'll fall into the rhythm of it. Um, so this is kind of along the same lines of what we just talked about. Wendy asks, she took um, a, a Bach flower remedy um, and she feels like she's having, I um, mean, she very well could be um, a pretty severe reaction to it. Um, so, hun, the thing is, and let me just, I want to word this right, because I, I don't want to ever seem like I'm ever, like, being, like, mean to somebody. And I'm not, and she's like, oh my god, you just said that. It made me feel like you were going to say something mean, but I'm not. Um, I'm a person who lives with anxiety, and to be clear, um, she took this flower remedy one time because she suffers from some um, social anxiety, and now two weeks later, she's feeling she feels like she's feeling the the um, effects of it, and um, it is possible. But I want to talk about what um, these um, flower essences really are, um, and then I'm going to kind of like dive into some other stuff to think about. So, Bach flower company they sell these essences and you can use them for like anxiety focus but a majority of the time they make their essences two ways they float flowers on top of water in the sun which puts absolutely zero medicinal value into the water lids and i believe in flower essences i believe that they have energetic purposes i i believe that um that um placebos are very powerful all right, I'm going to be real about that. Um, and the other way they do it is sometimes they boil flowers in a water. Um, and that's right on their website. This is how they say they do it. So if this was an essence, which again, and you can watch a video of how to make flower essences here on my YouTube and you'll understand what I'm saying. If it was an essence um, of the Mimulus flower, which is the one she used, there's literally nothing in that essence of physical medicinal property that would make you feel your um, it was a uh, dizziness headache fatigue impairment panic attacks brain zaps chills and nightmares um, for the better part of two weeks um, and even if it was a type where they boiled these flowers and then they take that water and they um, 
they water it down with more water and then they add it to 25 percent um grape alcohol which is what they're saying they use to stabilize it if you put um two drops like you said into a full cup of water and only drink that cup of water you are ingesting parts per thousands maybe even parts per million because each drop of that bach flower essence was watered down with alcohol and then more water and then added to water um I'm not saying that you might not have had a reaction to this plant. I'm saying that the human brain is very powerful. And as a person who lives with anxiety, um, I also know how hard it is to understand sometimes that we get caught in these mindsets of causing our own anxiety. Like we might think that we just have social anxiety, but we might not be aware of all the underlying stuff that's going on. Um, or like how that anxiety creeps into the rest of our life. Um, so for me, I have definitely taken some very real plant medicine. I'm not saying this wasn't real and that these symptoms that you're feeling aren't real to you. I'm saying our brain likes to make these ourselves feel these things. Even if you took this plant ally, even if it was the boil version, and even at parts per million or thousand or whichever it would really be, but it's barely anything, um, if it did cause a reaction in your body, um, it wouldn't last for two weeks. And if it did, it would be pretty severe. Like, I mean, like you would have had let me back up there. If you took it and you had that reaction, like for this reaction the last two weeks, I would expect like a ended up in the hospital reaction. Like like a physical, like, like hurting your liver or your kidneys or something like that. Um, because our body processes basically any um, herbal medicines that we're putting into ourselves within 24 to 48 hours. Um, so... Uh, I don't, I feel like I'm, I'm being mean and I'm not trying to be mean because I've been there. I have taken something and then allowed my mind to be like, okay, I'm feeling weird right now. Okay. All right. I'm feeling dizzy and I'm feeling sick and that made me sick. And then your brain and you might not even realize it talks you into feeling that way because, um, if I'm being honest here, your symptoms are classic anxiety attack. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying that something didn't, um, happen from taking this flower essence and that, you know, you should definitely go see a doctor. Um, but also when you took it, were you nervous? Were you nervous about how it would make you feel? Um, were you somewhat apprehensive at all? Did you start kind of just being like, you noticed it right after and you're, you know, did it, did it kind of like feed into it? You know, um, because that's very common for people who live with anxiety. Now, um, you say that sugar is making it worse and you're getting chills and nightmares and brain zaps. Um, I don't know if you're on any other medication. Um, I don't know if you take benzodiazepines or SSRIs, um, but I, uh, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I would look into, um, if you have, if you are taking those things, I would look into maybe the long-term side effects of taking those things because a few of these things like panic attacks and those, I understand what brain zaps mean. And if anybody's ever had one, they understand. And that, that, that's pretty common for SSRIs or benzos, which are, you know, like Xanax, Klonopin, Valium, and then SSRIs are into like, um, antidepressant type stuff um but you say sugar makes it worse sugar does something to us um sugar cracks us out it's literally a drug and this drug in particular kind of pushes your adrenals your adrenaline glands are what gives your body energy and um, when your adrenaline glands are depleted you live in a constant state of anxiety. I personally believe, in my honest opinion, um, one of the things that contributes to the massive anxiety levels of Americans is the fact that we live off of sugar, caffeine, Red Bull, all of these things that are pushing our adrenals to the max. And when your adrenaline glands are being forced to create more adrenaline than they have, you live in a persistent state of anxiety. Um, for me, nettle infusions saved my life. I used to be, just to put this out there, and I, I took benzos for a huge amount of my life and went through a horrendous withdrawal to get off of them and you have to do it very safely and very carefully but um, I used to be agoraphobic no way I'm talking to fucking thousands of people on the internet right now no way am I even going into a grocery store or there was one point in time <clears throat> when we lived off grid up on the mountain that 
driving my kids from the cabin to the bus stop which was like a 14 mile logging road ordeal where I didn't go past and another human was pure hell for me. It was like pure anxiety, panic attack the whole way there and back. Um, and now, I don't, I don't deal with any of that anymore. There was more stuff involved, like um, dealing with my traumas, talking about them openly to like normalize them within my body, like realizing like the power I actually gained from them, um, nourishing my body, and unfortunately long-term effect of benzodiazepines, ironically, um, can be anxiety and agoraphobia and all that stuff. But all that stuff aside, um, I just meant to say that it's easy to freak ourselves the hell out and think that something is making us feel this way um, and that sugar is pretty common at heightening these issues like right now I, I don't eat a lot of sugar but sometimes I'm a human and I eat like a whole pack of cookies <laughs> it might not be in one setting but I'm like oh a cookie hour later oh a cookie hour later and then before I know it I've eaten like enough and then the next day I am slammed with anxiety and um, all kinds of other issues um, so I'm not all that surprised if you're having anxiety issues that after you eat sugar, it makes it worse. And nightmares are extremely common for people who suffer from anxiety, um, especially if you've got underlying PTSD that's not been diagnosed, anything like that. Um, again, I don't, I don't want to make you feel like what's going on in your body isn't valid because you're definitely feeling it. I just want you to hear me say that our mind is extremely powerful um, and that we can physically make ourselves feel these things by believing that we do. Um, but again, I'm not a doctor and if you genuinely feel like these things have nothing to do with your thought patterns or your anxiety, I would definitely go see a doctor. Um, but if I was a person who lives with social anxiety and God knows I do, um, I really do. I'm better, but like I can talk to thousands of people online, but like a, a childhood friend that I've known for like years and years, like my entire life. And I've actually got a pretty close relationship with over the, off and on over the years came over to help me with something. And it was like, the anticipation of him coming over was like a nightmare you know I get a lot of anticipatory anxiety which is a lot of what social anxiety is too but um, I really lean on mother wart tincture she gives you that safe comfortable feeling um, you know and you can take her with you or anywhere you go and I just put a dropper full in some water or if it's real bad I'll put it right under my tongue so it absorbs into my my bloodstream um, quickly but um, mother war is a pretty good ally to have on hand um, and again I'm not a doctor but if you get to know motherwort tincture, she might actually help you with some of these things you're feeling. Um, I would definitely look into drinking nourishing herbal infusions um, just because they can really, really help you with anxiety and fatigue and all these things. But um, anyhow, so I hope that there's some answers there. Um, and I hope everybody enjoyed the video. <laughs> Again, I'll get into the rhythm of these like the other videos and they'll go a bit smoother. But um, if you like what I'm doing here, if you want to submit your own question, um, you can follow the link in my bio. Make sure that you subscribe to my videos and turn on notifications so you know when I post these. Um, in the past, I tell people when I answer their questions. Um, but if I'm being honest, the less work that I have to do to do these, the more likely I am to do them because I already have so much other work on my plate. So I would definitely say subscribe to my channel to see if your question has been answered. Um, if it hasn't been answered, don't take it personally. Maybe I feel like I've answered your question somewhere else in a different video, or maybe I just don't feel comfortable answering it um, or qualified to. Again, nothing here is medical advice. I am not a doctor. Go see your doctor. Um, so, but again, you can follow the link in my bio to submit your own question. Just click on Ask an Herbalist. Um, I will probably post these videos as a link to my website as well. Um, I'm clearly here to YouTube. Um, and then like and comment 
you know, um, conversation is important. Now, I know that these type of videos will probably get different um, comments, um, different um, suggestions. Uh, I'd kind of sway away. Like, you can talk about what's worked for you in the comment section. I probably wouldn't talk like you were a medical doctor. You know, um, just because you put yourself at risk, if somebody follows that advice, they could hurt themselves, And which is why I say repeatedly, I'm not a doctor, go talk to your doctor. Before you even decide to do any of these things, talk to your doctor, see what they have to think about it. Um, and definitely do your own research because this is just a stepping off point. So, anyhow, turn on notifications, subscribe to my channel, like and comment. <laughs> That's what I was supposed to say in like a really flowing, like smooth way. And again, if you want me to um, talk with you, have a conversation, link in my bio um, to my Instagram and my website and all those things. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.